Everyone, Andy's 20. And the, what's today? 19th. Uh, the Fire Emblem Direct was yesterday, I believe. And, you know, I was trying to find a way to describe what I thought of it. And after it ended, not even after it ended, like halfway through it. Because they spent like half of it talking about the mobile game. But like halfway through it, I was like, I had, there was a, sp a specific emotion. And I think I was like, I don't want to verbalize it. And then I went to talk with uh, a friend of mine who's uh, super into Fire Emblem the same way that I am. And she just said, like straight up the first thing she said after it ended was, well that was disappointing. And that, that was it. That was it. That was the exact emotion. The Direct did nothing to quell my fears for the future of Fire Emblem. In fact, it made them worse. And it's just so disappointing at how I can feel in regards to what was once my favorite franchise of anything ever. You know. Xenoblade took it, like, even if I was still super into Fire Emblem, Xenoblade still would have taken it away, because Xenoblade Chronicles is amazing. But it's like it's not even trying anymore. So we'll go through the four games that were shown, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Basically, I summarized it best in a Facebook post I made where I said, Hey, we over here at Nintendo Intelligence Systems know what you Fire Emblem fans want. It's Awakening, and Fates, and Awakening, and Fates. All the Fire Emblem you can ever want, ever. Fuck them for thinking that. Fuck them for thinking that. It's not even funny. Um, the first thing they hit up was the thing that I, like, I guess that I'm most interested in is the thing I want to say. Uh, and I'm interested in it because it's a remake of Fire Emblem 2, which is Gaiden. Uh, so the original six Fire Emblem games, I think, are Japanese only. I'm pretty sure it's Mars game, which was uh, remade into Shadow Dragon. Then Gaiden, the side story that's being remade into Echoes. Then Marth's second game, which is the third one, which was remade into, I think, New Hero Shadow and the Emblem of Light or something like that. I, I can't remember, but that's the that's the second DS remake that was only released in Japan. And then after that is, uh, I don't know what the order is, but there's Thracia 776 and the uh, Genealogy of the Holy War in there somewhere. And then... And then, I don't know, and then at one point, Roy's shitty game is there, and then Lily and Hector and the rest is history. Um, but, uh, so I'm interested in it because it's a remake of an older game. And as I make no qualms in showing, the direction that Fire Emblem is heading in has been pretty shitty. Uh, Fire Emblem, for all the games that i played, have always had interesting characters with a lot of death and stories that, at the very least, make you care. That they, that they aren't just vehicles. For the characters to get from point to point B. It's actual invested storytelling that affects the characters in the story. Which is how it usually is. I summarized it best when I was chatting with my friend is that Soren, a singular character from the Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, the Telius games, he has more character and depth to him than the entire cast of Awakening. And that's not an exaggeration. It really isn't. Um, and that's an issue. That's my main issue with the new games, you know. Uh, the new mechanics making the game easier, that sucks. The overabundance of the stupid dating sim elements that came out of nowhere, that sucks even more. But above all, it's the loss of character death and story death that bugged me. And in Gaiden's case, because like I just, someone actually made a good point, Gaiden was a Nintendo Entertainment System game, I think? I think? Uh, or Super Nintendo, I'm not sure, but it was a really old one. And the point is that Gaiden um, because it was released in, back then, uh, the games in, in that age had rather simple stories, simply because they, they didn't have much space to do a lot of text, I want to say, and really in-depth things. And that was fine back in the day, no one was um, uh, upset about it. That said, I, I know very little about um, Gaiden. All I know is Alm and Salak are the main characters, and that's it. And everything that I learned from seeing the Echoes presentation at the start of the Direct. That, that's my entire knowledge in regards to Fire Emblem Echoes. But I'm interested in it because it's an old story that has that they're remaking. And with any luck, they won't retaught it like they have for the uh, shitty stories that Awakening and Fates have. Because it's already a blueprint there, so they can't mess it up. I hope they can't, but they can prove me wrong. Uh, with any luck, they won't shoehorn the stupid... Uh, 
dating mechanics into a game that doesn't need them. So while I am interested in the game because it's a remake, I'm not super excited for it because it's not a Fire Emblem game. Like it's not a standard Fire Emblem game. You know, um, it's it's basically the Fire Emblem version of uh, Zelda 2: Adventure of Link and Super Mario Brothers 2, uh, USA anyway. It's that's exactly what it is, you know. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, it doesn't really interest me too much because of that. I'm more into Fire Emblem games for what they are, you know, the turn-based strategy stuff. I don't really need the dungeon crawling, and I don't need the random encounters. So the game, it's it has me interested because I think it could be something different, something better than what we've had. Uh, so at the very least, I'll keep looking at it, and uh, depending on what else I see, I'd definitely consider getting it. Because I already skipped out on Fates, so I won a Fire Emblem game, a new Fire Emblem game that I can enjoy, and that one, honestly, to some extent, looks like it. So, yeah, there's that. So, honestly, it was that was the part I was happiest with for the entire presentation. Uh, the next thing that got me really happy, slash very concerned, was that they announced that they're making a new console Fire Emblem game for the Switch. A new mainline series. This will be, Which means, I had a hard time numbering this, because I think... Radiant Dawn was 10, the Marf Remix were 11 and 12, Awakening was 13, Fates was 14. So, the Marth Remix counts as 11 and 12, which means I guess the Gaiden Remake will count as 15, which means the Switch game will be 16. Okay, so Fire Emblem is 16, Fire Emblem Switch. I'm super stoked for it, because it's, um, it's a console Fire Emblem game, we haven't had one of those in almost 10 years. I just looked at my, the box for Radiant Dawn, I think it says copyright 2007 on it. And for all I know, it could have been released in 2006 in Japan, which makes it even longer. But the point is, it's been forever since we got a console game, so I'm excited for a console Fire Emblem. But I'm also worried because this is, this is another new Fire Emblem. And depending on how this one goes, will literally solidify what Fire Emblem is now. Because like with Awakening, Awakening was once. With Fates, it was twice. If Switch follows the trend that Awakening and Fates have put down, as they've said, in disregarding character death and story death and just embracing the dating mechanics and just making the games easy, if it, if it, in, if it likes, if it continues like that, like it has been, then the Switch game will literally seal my fate in regards to how much I care about Fire Emblem forevermore. Which is to say, I won't care anymore. Um, but if not, Fates is also, not Fates, Fates, Switch is also the last possible chance for the mainline Fire Emblem series to get me invested again. So, I'm ex I am really want to see more for Fire Emblem Switch to know which direction it's going to go in. That said, it wasn't until I think the second or third Fates trailer that I realized what it was doing and I became incredibly saddened by it to the point that I decided not to get it because the first Fates trailer actually had me interested um, but somewhere down the line later on it just was like you know what fuck this, this is not what I want so there's that there's a chance that the first trailer will get me in but then the second trailer will lose me but I'm hoping that when we start seeing more of Switch it'll keep me invested. Third game they hit up was Fire Emblem Warriors and all they showed was the same trailer from last time and then um, uh, and then Krom beating up a bunch of dudes, and then that was it. So, Fire Emblem Warriors is interesting because I I wanna I wanna be excited for it, but I'm worried. And the best way that I can submit my worries is just the trailer worries me. I know the teaser that we got at the Switch presentation didn't show much of anything, and this one was the same thing. But it just worries me because it's like. Corrin's sword, Ryoma's sword, Xander's sword, Krom's sword, and Marf's sword. And it's like, that's all you see. And then uh, the character that you chose to highlight first off was Krom. And so it's like... It's not too hard to believe that they'd want the game to be themed after exclusively Awakening and Fates, and maybe a little bit of Marf's game. Because you can't leave the OG out. You can ignore him and you can push him to the side, but you can't leave him out. And that would suck. If that ends up being what the game is, I'm gonna skip out on that one too. Like, I don't know what Nintendo's... Actually, I do know what Nintendo's deal is. They're going with what's popular, and that's what fucking sucks. It's an understandable business move, but it's, the, it's such a shitty business move at the same time for people who've been longtime fans. Because you just get snubbed all the time. 
You just get pushed aside and be told who cares about your characters. No one does. All they care about is these characters that they could marry from the stupid 3DS games that mean more to, literal to Nintendo than anything else that came before it did. And it's like, Nintendo, there are 14 Fire Emblem games. 14! And they're acting like there's only three. Or like two and a half, since they're kind of pushing Marth's games back as well. Which is surprising, of all things. Ah, oh, man. You know, in a perfect world, in my ideal world of Fire Emblem Warriors is that the only characters from Awakening and Fates will be the ones shown in the opening. Uh, Krom, Ryoma, Xander, and Corrin. And that's it. And all the other slots will be taken up by reps from the entire history and make it like an actual celebration of Fire Emblem's long time history with all these amazing characters that you know for years or even some that you've never seen before uh, in the way that you've never uh, played their games before because there are there's still some games I haven't played out there um, and that's uh, that's from Gaiden to before Roy's game that gap in there I have, I have very little knowledge of those characters you know um, so there's just so much in there that they could pull from and I I, I, I want to be hopeful, I want to think that Koei Tecmo can do it, because they did some pretty good representation for Hyrule Warriors. They got Agatha? They got Marin? You know, they got ridiculous characters that you otherwise would like, it's like, really? You know, so in that, in that regard, I'm hopeful that Koei Tecmo can bring up some characters that you would never expect in the best possible ways. Um, but at the same time, it's like, if they're restricted to what Nintendo Intelligence Systems tells them that they can or can't do, then it'll just be Tokyo Mirage Sessions all over again and you'll just have characters from the latest games. And if it winds up being Awakening Fates Warriors, I'll be... I'll be upset. You know, to be honest. So, for Warriors, I was hoping that they ha they would have more to show. Um... Uh, to get me interested, but unfortunately there just... there literally wasn't anything different, so my feelings on that game still remain the same. Uh, I'm really, really hopeful. Because I want to be able to play as some of the coolest characters from across the Fire Emblem games that I've played, and like actually being able to fully control them and to kill stuff, and it's just it's it could be amazing and hilarious, I guess, depending on like how many dudes we're taking out. But I mean, above all, it will be on the Switch, so uh, people, the Wii U could not handle as many monsters, enemies on the screen as one would want. Granted, there was still quite a few, but if you went into co-op, it just it became boring. Uh, it, there was a little, not that many enemies on screen in co-op. Like me and my sister and I enjoyed playing it together because we were playing together, but I really wish there were more enemies on screen. Um, this being on the Switch, I can, based off that short trailer, it doesn't look like that'll be a problem. And I really hope there's multiplayer in this one too, because that'll rock. That'll be really fucking cool. Um, so what can I say as for the characters that I want for that game? Hell. You know, at the end of the day, if they can get a few members of the Grail Mercenaries in there, I'm good. You know? Like, aside from Ike, who I think Ike is pretty much, like, I think he's probably a guarantee. Like, if they leave Ike out, that'll be... that'll suck. But, I definitely, I, I definitely believe that he'll get in. And, aside from Ike, I'd like to see Micaiah, the other main character of the Telius games. I'd like to see Soren, because Soren's a fucking badass. I'd like to see Mia, because she's one of my all-time favorite Fire Emblem female characters, if not my favorite female Fire Emblem character. Um, I think Titania would be cool. Second in command of the Grell Mercenaries, she's awesome. Uh, any Lagoos that could get in, even if it's just one. A transforming character would be pretty rad. Uh, my sister mentioned Nasir, uh, the White Dragon, that'd be pretty cool. So, you know, and of course that's just... Uh, off the top of my head, but there's a bunch more that I could go into, a bunch more specific ones, like Nephany or Bulk, or uh, even some uh, Sacred Stones characters that I totally love for another reason or another, even Marissa or Inez, even though he's a jerk, he's pretty cool, Tana, there's a bunch of characters that I would love to see, but, um, you know, it all depends. At the end of the day, I think Hyrule Warriors, at the end of all its DLC, had 29 playable characters, I think, uh, counting, of course, I don't know if that counts. Ganon and the Giant Kuko, but Ganon and the Giant Kuko were playable, so um, that leaves me hope for some kind of huge character we could play as here. My sister suggested Formotis, uh, the demon from Sacred Stones, and I'd be like, dude, 
Like, I don't think that'll happen, but seeing that they could pull off Ganon, maybe? Or just maybe some big Eldritch Horror of some kind would be pretty cool. So you see, it's like when you talk about it like that, I get excited. But then I see what they actually showed and it worries me. And then they spent the entire last half on the mobile game. Which I'm not going to dismiss the mobile game because it's a mobile game. I'm going to dismiss the mobile game because I can't play it. I don't think I can. I don't have any smart device, I don't think. I got this. Uh, Alcatel One Touch Pixie 7. Um, it can play Pokemon Go uh, and it can play Mitomo. Um, but uh, for Pokemon Go, it doesn't have the AR, so I can't actually see the Pokemon uh, superimposed in the real world, which kind of sucks. But um, that aside, I don't know if this can run it. I don't even know if this will be a viable system for it. It's got the Google Play Store on it, so I don't actually know what category that falls under. An iPad, uh, Android, I think, actually, Android devices. But um, my point is, I don't know if I'll be able to play it, and... Uh, I don't know if I want to, because like once again, the trailer, like right off from the beginning, was all Awakening and Fates characters, and then every so often they talk about a few uh, Marth characters, and then they mention like Lynn and Ike and Leaf, and I think it was Eric or Ephraim, uh, one of them, by name, but just the one time, and then they were back to talking about Awakening and Fates characters, and I, I, I like to think that they're including literally everybody in there, because they said in the trailer, my favorite part from the trailer, which is the only part from the reaction I'm kind of sad is gone, is there's a point where the guy says, play as Fireman characters from all throughout history, and they show this big mon uh, like, uh, montage, like not a montage, it's like this big image of all their official arts, and it's all Awakening Fates characters. And I'm just like, I, I sassed them so hard at that point, but uh, the reaction's gone, I deleted it, because it was pretty boring, honestly. Like, I think, there were a few moments, but by the end, but halfway through the mobile stuff, I literally stopped talking. Because there wasn't anything to say, really. It was just this big whole show. If anything, I should have just cut it there and kept everything up to that point. But, eh, I don't think it was worth it. Um, regardless, I don't know. Like, I'm hopeful that I just, I'd like to think that they haven't forgotten about the 10 other Fire Emblem games that they made. But they really, the, the direct did nothing to quell my fears that they did. Or rather that they didn't. So, you know. I'd rather be here jumping up and down off the floor, but it, as a longtime Fire Emblem fan, it just... Nah. It just didn't. So, you know, it's, just, it's, it's funny. We got the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 thing. One trailer that got me so stoked. I can't wait for that game. And then we got four Fire Emblem game announcements, and the best I can do is interested in hope. You know, so it's just, it's weird. It sucks. But that's just, that's just how it is, and it's gonna be how it is until I see more for uh, Fire Emblem Warriors and the, the Switch game and Echoes. There we go. Yeah. Although I will say, one of the dudes, one of the, because uh, it looks like they made, I think, four or five uh, character specifically for heroes, one of which is just a new version of Anna, which, yeah, Anna! But one of the dudes was holding a fucking gun, and it's like, that's a gun! And then he fires it, and I'm like, that is a gun. That is a gun. There's never been a gun in Fire Emblem before. That is weird. Um, that is weird. So that actually, that, that, that was, that was fun. That was fun seeing that at the very least. It was interesting. Okay, so here's another thing I want to ask, actually, because I don't know, so I like that if someone else there knows. I hate the character designer for Awakening and Fates. I hate the way the characters look. Um, reusing the characters for Fates was stupid. Um, Echoes, do they have another character designer? Is it a new person? Because I think it is, and if it is, I'm very happy. And Heroes, I think Heroes, I think they said that the new, new character portraits for the characters are done by a variety of artists, like um, like the like the guest characters in Awakening. And so if that's the case, that's good too, because it's a whole bunch of people, as opposed to just this one guy who sucks at it. Um, but yeah, so... Just let me know if, if I was right about the variety thing in the ways of heroes, and if I was right about the, uh, co the, 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 the Echoes guy being different too, because please... Give me someone new. Either give me someone new, or give me back the character designer for Awakening and, and not- Oh shit, uh... For 
uh, the T-List games. And sure, yeah, the T-List games are my favorite, and so I love everything about them. But I definitely think the designs for Path of Radiant, and especially the way everyone looked in Radiant Dawn, was the best Fire Emblem characters have ever looked. And no one will ever convince me otherwise. So give me, I think it's, I, I think the designer for Path of Radiance Radiant Dawn was actually female. I could be wrong. But give me her back. Please. Let her design the characters for a new Fire Emblem game. Above all, that's what I, that's one of the big things that I could totally go for. I said sometime back to one of my sisters that one of the things I want is a different character designer. And yes. But if they could bring back the Natelius Games character designer, I would be way happy with that. Okay, because those characters really did look the best. So, hoping for that one day. Who knows when, but up until then, we'll just have to see what happens. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Fire Emblem Direct. What did you think? Did you hate everything I said? Did you agree with me? I don't know. Uh, I just... Join me in the waiting for more trailers for those games and see what they have to bring us. I'm gonna go back to being excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, anyway... That's all, and I'll see y'all next time, so until then, hasta.